This is part four in the tutorial series, and we're going to be going over PID. What PID is in a nutshell is it's three constants that are controlling your robot's velocity in order to reach a desired position. I recommend reading this article that I'll have linked in the description, as it can clear up some confusion of things that I'll go over in this video. So let's say during autonomous, I have a ring that is 18 inches away from the robot, and I want to go collect it. So I'd want to drive my robot 18 inches. And the simplest way to do that would be to have a function like this here, where if I pass in how many inches I want to go and the speed of the motors. So first I spin this, the motors at the set voltage. So I have that set to four volts, which is one third the speed of the drivetrain. Then in a while loop, I'm getting the position of the drivetrain in degrees and averaging them out. But now I just have the position of the drivetrain in degrees. And to get that in inches, I then find the circumference of the wheel and multiply that by the gear ratio I have in the drive, which is the 36 tooth to a 48. And then I divide that by 360. And so now we have an if loop checking if the drivetrain position in inches is greater than or equal to the inches that I want to go, then we'll stop the drive. And let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, the robot did pick up the ring, but let's say I wanted to do more in my autonomous and wanted to move faster. So let's bump up the speed of the motors to 12 volts, which is max speed, and try it out. So it did once again pick up the ring, but because the robot stopped instantly, it jerked forward, and that won't be consistent across multiple runs of that autonomous. And so in order to fix that, we want to decelerate before we get to the ending position. So to do that, that's where we'd use PID. So to write that, you do chassis.drivedistance, uh, 18 inches with a max speed of 12. And let's test that out. So as you can see, that was a lot better as the robot decelerated before stopping. In order to get that deceleration that you saw in the last example, we need to tune three constants, the P, I, and D. To see how the robot reacts to different constants, we have a graph here that's going to be graphing the set point, which in the last example was 18 inches, and then this pink line, which is the robot's position, which would be the motor encoder values that we were getting from the last example. To start, you just want to tune the P and D constants. And to do that, you want to follow this flow chart here. So you want to see if the robot oscillates. If it does, then you want to increase KD. If it doesn't, then you want to increase KP. So as you can see here, the robot is not oscillating. So we're going to increase uh, KP. Start increasing, start increasing still not oscillating. And as you can see, it's starting to oscillate. So you can tell when it oscillates when this line starts to wiggle. So right about here, I'd say is when it starts oscillating and then you wanna start increasing KD. But I'll also show you what it looks like when it starts oscillating a lot. If I keep increasing KP, you're gonna see that's a lot of oscillations. Go back to where it was just about oscillating and then I want to start increasing KD. And I'd say it stopped oscillating, the line is smooth. But as you can see, the robot's position is at 0 0.7 and the set point's at one. And so now we want to tune the integral term, or I. To do that, the same kind of formula, it's does the robot overshoot the target? If it does, then we want to decrease KI, and if it doesn't, we want to increase it. So as you can see, we're undershooting the target. We are currently at 0 0.7, and the set point's at 1. We're going to increase it until we're out there. So now we're not overshooting and we're not undershooting, and this is what a tuned PID controller looks like. So the robot's position Start, we start uh, accelerating, keep moving closer to target, and then we start decelerating and stop right at the target. 
And so that's what we're going to do on the robot, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So to start tuning, you first want to open up autons.cpp, and you want to open up test.cpp. So in autons.cpp, this is where your default constants are. These are your p, i, and d, but also a new constant called start i. And what start i is, is that you're going to find a C that when you tune kp and kd, you're not going to get that undershooting that you saw for most movements. But smaller movements, like let's say I only wanted to drive the robot two inches, then you'd start to see this undershooting where you actually need a ki value. So what start i does is it'll only start applying an integral until if the robot is within that air. So for the turn constant where we're using it, the robot uses i as zero unless the robot is trying to turn within 15, 15 degrees or less then it'll start applying the 0 0.03 integral term. And that makes it so you won't suffer from something called integral windup, which is when is when you start having integral, I can move to actually just the code for this, is what's going to happen is you're going to add accumulated air. And over long distances, since turning a long distance takes longer than uh, turning a short distance, this accumulated air is going to build up wildly, and that's going to cause it so when you have a lot of accumulated air, uh, that's going to happen. Your, your robot's going to overshoot and then come back down. So that's why uh, there's the start I term here. So there are four PIDs that you're going to need to tune. Drive, heading, turn, and swing. And the way you're going to tune them is through these four drive methods drive, heading, turn, and swing, which correspond to the constants that they're going to be tuning. So to start, we're going to be tuning our drive PID constants, and we're going to be using this test drive function. This is a relative movement, meaning that it doesn't use odometry points. As you can see, I just plug in a distance. So it's going to be using the relative mode constants. And what you want to do, you want to do assy dot set drive constants and then we can just set them all to zero uh, except for the max voltage we'll say 10 the relative constant and we're going to leave default constants here as that way we have a backup of, of the default constants that have been given and so this is optional but i recommend getting a micro sd card and then making sure it's configured to the format FAT32. We'll have linked in the description on how to do. And then you want to plug that into your brain. And the reason for that is that way, whenever you're editing your PID constants, they're going to be saved onto the SD card in the brain. And that allows it so you can display what values you changed. So now on to tuning the drive PID. Okay, so first you're going to want to get a fully charged battery as the motor spins slightly different on the lower charge. Then you're going to want to run the program, press config, and then on the top right, it's going to say tune mode, and you want to click that twice until you get to tune relative. And then since we're going to be tuning the drive PID, you're going to click tune drive. And then you should see the graph pop up. And then on your controller screen, you should see all the constants that we need to be tuning. So don't worry about the settle time, timeout, uh, as I'll go over that later, but you're just gonna wanna be tuning the P, I, D, and start I. And the controls for the controller, I'll have flashed up on screen, and you can find them by going to test.h and scrolling down until you see PID tuner. And this will show all the controls for editing the variables for the PID. To start, I'm going to start increasing KP until the robot starts oscillating. And I'm also going to be using the default constants as a guide. Your values will be close to the default constants. First, I use the right arrow keys to increase KP to 2. 
and then I press X on the controller to start their Auton run. So now when the robot returns, you should see some graph data on the graph, and it looks like the robot was oscillating quite a bit. So what I'm going to do first then is I'm going to decrease KP until I get to the point where the robot just starts to oscillate. So I decrease it to 1 by using the left arrow key, and I start the auton again. So now it doesn't look like it's oscillating much. As you can see, there's not too much uh, ups and downs. So I'm once again going to increase now KP to uh, one and a half. The way I move to the next digit is I press A, and now I can edit uh, next decimal point. And now we're getting some oscillation again. So this KRP uh, value might be good, or I can decrease a little bit more if I want to be extra sure. So I decrease it to 1.4. Okay. That's good oscillation. So now I'm gonna start uh, increasing the D value. I'm gonna press the down arrow key twice. And I'm gonna increase D to um, five. Hold on, pressing X. So that looks pretty good, but still a little bit of oscillation down at the tail of the graph, you can see. So, increased it two more. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to run it one more time to be certain. And now a little bit of undershooting. So oh, I would actually decrease KD, but I increased it for some reason. Still some undershooting. So I'm going to increase KI then uh, to fix the undershooting, uh, and I'm going to increase it to 0 0.01. But also, when I do this, I need to make sure I increase start I. So I scroll all the way down to the bottom and put start I to 3, which should be uh, good enough. Um, or I, at this moment, I, this is a voiceover, so I could have decreased KD. Um, you, you don't have to do KI here, but whatever works, you know, there's no right answer. Okay, still undershooting, so I'd want to increase KI. it to 0 0.02. Yeah, that graph looks uh, perfect. You can see it's hitting the set points and decelerating properly. 
on that last graph, it goes a little bit under the line, so I could maybe increase KD a tiny bit. But I think this is really good, and there's the final run. You'll see it's kind of wiggling left and right, and that's just because my drivetrain friction is uh, bad on one side. But that's a perfectly tuned PID. If you had the SD card inserted, you can then press config and then press PID data, and that will show the variables that were changed while you were tuning your PID. And then now I can go into test.cpp and I can change my drive constants to 1.4 for the KP, 0.02 for the KI, 8.2 for the KD, and then 3 for the start I. And then to clear the data from the SD, you want to click config and then press your finger on the screen and move your finger up while holding onto the screen and then press wipe PID data. Okay, so now you just want to do those same steps, but just repeated for the turn PID. And then I do swing. And then finally, if you need to, you can do heading. But for the most part, the default constants for the heading PID should just be fine. And then I do have a video of me tuning the turn PID in real time, but the recording, the sun kind of got in the way, so the recording's kind of bad. But if you want to see that, I'll do a voiceover. I'll have that linked in the description. So anyways, that's it for part four. And part five, I'll be going over how to create autonomous runs.